Well, this is a rudderless and confused White House. I think one of the reasons we're in such a very difficult position internationally and in the Middle East, of course, is because we have an administration that is more reactive than proactive. We have got to right now have a strong comment from President Biden, from the House, from the Senate, from all Americans who are leading to say we are going to support Israel 100 percent. We are going to work to thwart this horrific attack by Hamas and those who would support it, specifically Iran. We have got to use every tool available to us to quell this horrific invasion of Israel. We've got to be loud. We've got to be clear and we've got to be unequivocal. Yeah, I mean, in May of 2021, the Biden administration released $235 million in aid to Palestine, the Palestinians. Uh, at the time, a senior State Department spokesperson even admitted that there was a possibility that the money could go to Hamas, saying that there are no guarantees, Congressman. I mean, we know this already. What is behind this appeasement from this administration to the largest and most severe sponsor of terrorism, and that is Iran? There's no question whatsoever that we have fallen back. Under the Trump administration, we took a hard line against all of our foes, whether it was Iran, whether it was China, whether it was Russia. Our foes realize right now we have weakness in the White House, plain and simple. They're rudderless and they're confused at the White House. This has got to change. But the reality is anything that we do to empower Iran, whether it's with this $6 billion or otherwise, is wrong. They use this money not only to fund Hamas, Hezbollah, they have taken an anti-Israel and an anti-American approach. Plus, they're a destabilizing factor in the Middle East. As we know, yeah. the Saudis were ready to work with Israel. They didn't want that. It, this is a time right now that America needs strong, bipartisan, loud, unequivocal foreign policy in support of our ally Israel in the Middle East. Yeah, well, the Senate will now hold a confirmation hearing next week for Ambassador to Israel, Jack Lew, former Secretary of the Treasury. Is that going to make a difference? We didn't even have an ambassador in place. Well, we don't have an ambassador in place. We don't have a policy in place. It's unfortunate. Uh, President Biden went on and had a picnic at the White House the other day right. during a, a horrific attack. They are literally clueless at this White House. It's, wow. it's wrong. It's bad for the American people. We need strong resolve. And, of course, we need a Speaker of the House. We need to be able to get back to work in the House, pass our appropriation bills. As you know, I have fought long and hard to make sure we have Iron Dome funding. I was the one who dressed down uh, Tlaib on the House floor last year. If you go back and you look at the tapes, when the Democrats tried to defund Iron Dome, I stood in the well of the House and basically said, we have got to fund Iron Dome, and look how good Iron Dome has done. It's not perfect, yeah. but it sure does protect Israel from these horrific rocket attacks from, from Hamas. Well, you make a great point, and thank you for that. Uh, well, let's talk about the road ahead. House Republicans are holding an official candidate forum today ahead of the official vote for the new speaker. I just spoke with Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise. He's running to become the next speaker. He says he has real support. Here's what he just told me. I want to get right back to work on the appropriations bills. We are over 70 percent of funding of government out of the House. Senate hasn't done zero. We're going to be in the 80s when I'm finished my first week as Speaker. Congress is actually appropriating bill by bill, not in big packages, no omnibuses, no midnight hour deals. Con Congressman, who are you supporting for Speaker? I'm supporting Steve Scalise. Uh, Jim Jordan is a good friend. I want the conference to be heard loud and clear. Maria, last night we had a very good meeting. It was not an official conference. We had about 150 Republicans. It was cordial. It was deep. It was thoughtful. Everyone got to say their piece. That's a step in the right direction. Right now, I don't know if either gentleman, Mr. Jordan or Mr. Scalise, have the votes, but we need to work towards getting a speaker as soon as possible. It was my bill, the Energy and Water bill of appropriations that was on the floor. I was speaking with Steve right before the motion to vacate came. We were ready to debate it and pass that. We've got to get our appropriation bills passed. We are going to do that in the House so we can sit and make sure that deadline, that 45-day deadline, is now down to about 38 or 39 days. We've got to get the work done for the American people. It is imperative that we get a Speaker of the House. Let's hope that we can do that tonight and vote on it tomorrow. It's going so to be difficult, though. 
So walk us through the process then. I mean, you've got some members who refuse to send another dime to Ukraine. The White House wants $24 billion. We already saw 117 House Republicans vote against that. Uh, now we've got discussion of an, an emergency spending package to Israel. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a, a bipartisan priority once we've got clarity on the speaker. We've got 39 days left to get these bills done. How are you going to do it? Well, Maria, as you're aware, I was an adamant supporter of keeping the government open while we were doing our work. Just think, if we had listened to those voices who wanted to shut the government down, where we would be right now. We yeah. need to keep the government open for the American people, for the markets, for really to make sure that, that we quell any thoughts of, of concern about the American government. We have to get a speaker, keep the government open. Ultimately, ultimately, the appropriation process in the House will go forward. We will have to conference with the Senate and the House. The reality is the House has one-third of of, of the process. We don't have all the process. The Senate yeah. and the White House view this differently. Ultimately, I think we'll probably see some type of, of a compromise that is higher than the House levels and lower than the Senate and White House levels. Co higher compromise on each specific bill that you're finishing? Not necessarily. Some of the bills, like my bills, actually the energy and water bill, had so an increase number. of about two to three percent. The overall number and the and some of the some okay. of the portfolios like labor, education, health and human services and CJS, these bills will ultimately need a plus up. Uh, state and okay. foreign operations. Uh, we've got to aid Israel right now. I think you're right. gonna see what happened this weekend change the dynamic as we go forward with the negotiations. We've got to be reasonable, we've got to be rational, we've got to be truthful with the American people, but we are in a very dangerous spot right now. And yes. we need to get there as Americans first. Congressman, real quick before you go, what if Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise do not get the votes? Then what happens? What if they, they neither of them get the votes? Well, we're going to have to work through a process. It is a process. It was arduous in January, as you, you're aware. I supported uh, Speaker McCarthy uh, all through the rounds. Uh, a consensus candidate might come back. Kevin McCarthy's name might come back up. We will work through this. Uh, both Scalise and Jordan are wonderful people. Both could do the job. I happen to have a closer relationship with Steve. Obviously, I was with him on the day that, that he was shot on the ball field. We've worked together closely for years, but Jim Jordan's an outstanding American. Either could do the job, but there are several people in the conference who could do the job if asked. Okay. Well, we'll see. Congress will be watching. Thanks very much.